Hello. I feel like Britney Spears in this thing. It's pretty cool. Um, so I'm Olivia B. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a photographer. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about high school and dreams and following those dreams and sometimes disregarding reality. And I want to talk to you about love and self-motivation. Are they moving? I don't think they're moving now. Oh, there we go. And love and self-motivation and the things that you have to do. I'm going to narrate it with a lot of my own photographs and also some stupid shit that I found on the internet. Um, I used to be a kid who was very focused on academics. That's me, uh, two from the left, unfortunately. Um, I entered high school with a very obvious passion for art, but it was kind of always at the back of my mind that I would be like a science dude or a math person, you know, something really conventionally smart because we're taught in school that these kinds of things are the only way that you can be smart. Um, and because of this, I kind of thought that that was the only option. So I was very involved with Lego robotics. Um, so this next clip is a, sh uh, a clip of my, me and my shitty haircut doing something really nerdy. It's also a very bad video. I ripped it off YouTube. Very hard all year long to get this accomplished. Yes, we did. For the younger kids out in the lobby, there will be the JFLL. In the meantime, the pig mice are on a roll. Looks like they we were called the pig mice, unfortunately. And released another and It is entirely made out of Legos, Jumped unfortunately. Dirt molecules into the trap. I bet you that's a scoring move. The pig mice, however, moving the truck onto the platform and releasing the platform, that is a double scoring move. <laughs> double Last scoring move. Points, <laughs> points. It's all about the points. Um, and even though I really enjoyed this very nerdy part of my life, um, I think I did it because I thought it was my only option for how to be successful. Um, and this is partially where I went wrong. I was so concentrated on success and how unsuccessful I was and how successful I wanted to be that I didn't remember that success and fame and riches and admiration are all really dumb goals when they're placed by themselves. The goal should always be to keep doing what you love. And success will come from that, and maybe even admiration. When I was young, <laughs> yes, I drew this, um, in 2000, I believe, um, I thought that being an artist, no matter how good I got and how much I loved it, I thought that it was totally out of reach, that it was just a fantasy. It could never be a reality because I was prey to reality. I was always thinking about how realistic my goals were, and I think that's the opposite way of how people should think. Sometimes I think you have to disregard reality. Aspirational compromise, is for pussies. By disregarding reality and focusing on what you want and what you aspire to become, you're listening to yourself. And this is so important and it's so hard. It's taking a risk. It's saying, I want this. And it's saying, I'm going to fight for this. And that's so hard. It's, it's so hard. And I think this is especially important to prioritize when you're a young adult, climbing out your friend's window because the cops came. When you're a teen, you're going through a big transitional phase in your life. You're becoming an adult, you're experimenting socially, academically, sexually, you're trying to find your sense of self, which is really hard since you have so many people around you telling you what to do and how to do it. And often, the only person that you actually need to listen to is drowned out by all the opposing opinions, and that person is you. You know that little voice at the back of your head it knows everything about your wants, about your needs, about what really happened last night. Your gut feeling is usually right. When something knows, it knows. When something doesn't, it knows. Put simply, listen to your heart. It's an easy thing to say and a really hard thing to do. 
And in addition to difficult, it's so cheesy. Listen to your heart, follow your dreams. But it's cheesy because it's said all the time, and it's cheesy because it's important. You can't compromise your dreams, especially when you're young, but at any age. And this is so much easier said than done. And this very common compromise is not necessarily your fault. A lot of things contribute to this weird attitude we have here in the world about ambition. Especially when you're a young person, and especially when you're a young person going to school in the American public education system. Because everyone tells you, beginning when you're a child, to reach for the stars and follow your dreams and remember, the sky's the limit. And in the beginning, these are often coined by your primary school teachers and advertised on your dentist's ceiling. But by the time you're making real life decisions about your life, like whether or not to attend college or where you want to live or what you really want to do for the rest of your days, these phrases have become nearly irrelevant or maybe just forgotten. Because part of the problem is that these things are so verbal that they often don't become anything more than that. A common school assignment for a five-year-old is what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be a fireman, that kind of stuff. And following your dreams and being what you really want to be is so respected and reasonable even when you're five years old. You want to be a fireman? Well, I'm your mom and I'll buy you a fireman costume because I want you to be happy. And your dreams seem so tangible at that age. It's so simple to want something when you're five. Like, of course you're going to be a fireman. You're going to be a fireman like tomorrow. When you start to grow up, reality hits at an alarming rate. Suddenly, it's not about following your dreams as much, and we are still told in school and whatnot that you should follow your dreams, but it's a verbal thing. It's all about the talk, not much about the walk. But then it becomes this thing that you should maybe forget about because of money, or being realistic, or your family, or your location. People will still tell you to follow your dreams, but how do you even go about putting that into action? Just listening to your heart is harder, putting it into action is worse. And maybe it's hard because there isn't a set path for everything that everyone wants to do. It is on a person by person, situation by situation basis. But the common factors here are self-motivation and love. And how these two things bring you to learn what you need to learn and do what you need to do to accomplish your goals. Which brings us to the subject of education and how education becomes obtained. People often associate education with school which is obviously true to some degree because school is supposed to educate you. But not everybody learns that way. For many people, some that might not even know it, learning by doing is easier and more rewarding. My high school experience was uh, pretty unconventional. The first year went pretty normally until the beginning of June when I was contacted by Converse um, to take some photos for them. I was 15 and this was my first professional photography job. And it was amazing. I mean, I didn't know that this world existed. I was taking pictures for fun, but making money and making connections and experiencing this whole new beautiful thing that I was falling in love with more and more every day. And I think that this made me feel validated, which was really good for me, and I'm really glad it happened because there's no way that we could be having this conversation if it weren't for the opportunities that popped up for me in high school. Um, but even though it was so life-changing and so amazing and I'm so thankful for it, I wish I could have validated myself earlier. Because honestly, I was really shy and not very confident, and I had compromised my dreams because of reality and the reality of being realistic. It was only until I got this push, this validation, that I started reaching for what I wanted. I've come to work on a lot of campaigns, and I've shot a lot of covers, and I have a client list that I'm really proud of. But one of the things I'm most proud of is that I keep pushing myself, and I really want to get better and I will never be good enough, and I will never reach better, but it gives me something to strive for and something to paw at. I just wish I could have believed in myself earlier because no one needs to be validated by anyone other than themselves. So I finished high school because I wanted to, and I missed a lot of high school because I needed to. Um, I learned the best by doing, and taking photos is my favorite thing, and I'm self-motivated, and I love what I do, and that's important to me. I'm following my dreams, and nothing is getting in my way because I don't accept anything getting in my way. If there's anything I learned in high school, it's that you have to do stuff other than high school. And you can generalize this statement and make it apply to everyone at any point in anyone's life by saying that you have to do stuff 
besides the stuff that you have to do. Like, maybe that's obvious. Like, you have to make time for the things you love. But maybe later in life it gets overlooked or pushed away because other things are more important. When I missed class in high school, I got a lot of shit for it. And I don't always get it. Like, teachers would tell me that my priorities weren't in order, that Tale of Two Cities was more important than the New York Times, and that scaling triangles were more important than Hermes. And to some people, they might be. But to me, they weren't. And I knew I was making the right decisions, but it made me upset that no one else thought I was fit enough to make those decisions for myself. The way I saw it, school is supposed to prepare you for life, and I was diving in and doing what I loved. And I knew I was doing the right thing, and I know I'm still doing the right thing. It was right when I decided not to go to college this year, and I know I'll continue to make the right decisions for me because I'm self-motivated and I love what I do. So I got around my schooling, <laughs> but still, the American public education system needs some tweaking, like major tweaking. Um, and I think this is a very commonly held belief by pretty much everyone. There are a lot of statistics that I don't really want to discuss about how kids aren't learning that much in school anymore. And one of the biggest problems is that schools haven't changed that much since the 1800s. Um, they're very factory style and they're not specialized enough. They don't encourage enough learning outside of the classroom if it's not directly school related. And when you're a high schooler, college is one of the only things your elders love to endlessly spew into your ears. Last year, during my sixth period government class, there was this presentation for a college in which the lady who was promoting the college actually said, if you don't go to college, you will not get a job, you will not succeed in life, and you will not be happy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Under my breath, I said, wow, that's a load of bullshit. <laughs> Naturally. And apparently, this lady's ears were more effective than her mouth, and she proceeded to yell at me. And I feel like she may have been the victim of her own reality, but that might be me just being too hopeful. The way college is put out there nowadays, it kind of grosses me out. It's like this huge advertised ordeal that brags about being the key to the life you want, and like college is the secret ingredient for happiness and success. There are also a lot of kids who are attending college right now, after, right after high school, because they feel like they don't have any other options. And even if they are aware of the other options, they might not feel as if, as if they'll be respected in the real world if they decide to take a year off or two climbing mountains or couch surfing across the country, or if they decide to pursue anything other than school. But some of the most successful people in the world have decided that college wasn't their thing, and they did other things instead. We all know this guy. I bet 90% of you in this room have an iPhone or are taking notes on your iPad predicting when I'm going to fall in these shoes. Um, <laughs> Abe Lincoln, he's on the fucking penny. <laughs> Simon from American Idol, I don't have to say anything. Um, Julie Andrews, the reason your mother put sugar and medicine down your throat. <laughs> Walt Disney, you have him to thank for all of your childhood memories and also all of the Americans in the Midwest wearing XXXL Mickey Mouse sweatshirts. <laughs> because it's ambition that fuels your success, not a degree. These people love what they do and they run with it. They're big dreamers. They, bu they built their own education system. And I'm not trying to hate on college. I'm just trying to hate on the way that it is advertised as the sole option. Because not going to college right away or, going to col or not going to college at all is great for a lot of people. But college is also great for a lot of people. It might even be okay for me in the future. I just know it's not for me right now and that's okay. But if, if you're motivated at school, it'll do you wonders. Because the common factor in success is self-motivation. It is just about the biggest aspect of successful education in and outside the classroom. And this self-motivation stems from love. You have to love what you do. You have to. You absolutely need to. And finding what you love is hard. Just like finding where you love or who you love, passion is tricky. But as they say, you know when you know. And once you find this love and this passion, it's hard to actually go through with it. It's hard to go through the act of dreaming big because we are so scared of this big shitty thing called disappointment. 
Disappointment and fear are both big, scary emotions, and they're out to get you. Whenever I would complain about my life to my mom, she would say, oh, come on, Olivia, nobody's out to get you. But in this case, they are. <laughs> they're out to get you, it's true. But it's possible to fight back. It's so possible, it's probable even. Because if you have those two things, self-motivation and love, disappointment and fear can only give you splinters. Love and self-motivation can guide you through almost anything. If you keep them dear to your heart and don't let them run away, you'll be okay. They're the most essential items in your toolbox. So if you decided to listen to me today, take a step in following your dreams. If you already are, take another one, maybe two. If you need a push in the right direction, push yourself or tell someone that believes in you to push you, even if it's just a baby step. Because everyone can, anyone can, you can. Aspirational compromise is for pussies. Thank you. <laughs>